Welcome to Devs Talk Live presented by Mancini Sleep World. You might see a familiar face here. I'm joined by Dalton Johnson. Daddy Dalton Johnson now coming back from parental leave. If you don't remember the last time you saw his face, it was actually a familiar time against Portland. <laughs> December 17th, the Warriors were close in that game. Yes. Ended up losing, I think, oh, excuse me, winning by just a few points. I think four points, yes. Four points, yes. exactly. So the first two against Portland were pretty close until they got that December 23rd blowout. But they got a win tonight. So welcome back, Dalton. You, you brought some good juju. Yeah, thank you for having me. Like I said earlier, it's good to be back. Feels kind of like the new normal, right? Gotta yeah. figure out dad life, gotta figure out work life, dubs talk live life. <laughs> so again, good to be back. Good for the Warriors to eke out the win as well. Right, you came back just in time. Shout out to the baby Gemma that has been transforming your life both on and off the court, technically. I remember when you announced her, little Gemma Joan, and I just saw some pictures before the show. She is a bubbly, happy, attentive little one, and I'm so, so happy that you have that little gift to share, and now you can go back home, and hopefully she'll be asleep. Yes. Hopefully. Um, that's super cool. Well, I do want to break down this game, but of course we have to welcome you back properly because Dalton, like I said, you brought some good juju. The Warriors won tonight against the Portland Trailblazers 100 to 92. Now let's break down some stats real quick. They kept the Blazers under 37% from the field. Good. They also had 16 turnovers. Not so good. Um, they also were able to keep, for the most part, the, the Blazers in check. Good but they also were out-rebounded and all these other things. There was a lot of things that just kept going good, bad, good in this game. Why doesn't this win feel great? Because it felt like game 80, which it is, right? Where they, they looked yeah. exhausted. We yeah. know that they're shorthanded. No Clay, no Draymond, no GP2, right? It is, it is the 21-win Blazers. So you expect, even without three super key contributors, the Warriors should still be able to get this win. But that's not the Warriors season. Mm. That's not the NBA. We understand that. I think why it doesn't feel great is the sloppiness to it, the complacency to it, where the Blazers ended up taking 20 more shots than the Warriors. They crushed them in second chance points. You brought up the turnovers. But it's also the fact that midway through the third quarter, the Blazers had 15 points off of turnovers. The Warriors were yet to score a single point off of a turnover. So even the little opportunities they just weren't taking advantage of and were giving the Blazers way too many opportunities in their own right as well. Well, it is still a win. And this is now the Warriors' 25th win on the road, which is huge. And also their ninth win, keeping an opponent under 100 points, seven of which have come on the road. That's an impressive feat to be able to do that on the road, especially in this NBA. But... It started a little bit slow, particularly for a person named Stephen Curry. Could not get some shots going off in the early part of this game. Had to find some early offense inside first before he could come back outside. Ended up pretty decent for, for the Warriors, right? 23.7 assists, 22 points, excuse me, eight assists, seven rebounds. Ended up being the offense that the Warriors needed, but created some for his own. What were the Blazers doing to slow him down to get started? Well, again, right? I mean, we talk about what time of the season this is at. We talk about no Clay, no Draymond, which have been huge as far as offense with Steph Curry recently. We talked pregame about what they provided for Steph Curry with the win against LA. So even with like out of bounds plays, we saw always double teaming Steph Curry, full court, Chauncey Billups. He knows what a great guard Steph Curry is. He just, re just I think it was a year or two ago, I remember being at the game and Chauncey Billups as a Hall of Famer now going in finally this year was being asked about Steph Curry, where he fits, all this stuff. And he just said, look, he's the greatest combo guard mm -hmm. of all time. Yeah. So he knows the greatness of Steph Curry, and he's going to force the rest of the Warriors to beat his Blazers team, especially with no Clay and with no Draymond. It makes sense that he was our BMW ultimate performer because he had to be for this Warriors team to be able to get the uplift that they needed over the Portland Trailblazers. Now, there was someone else, though, that came through the clutch for Stephen Curry and also of the old Warriors lore, Kavon Looney. Kavon Looney, since March 7th, that was the first game that he was available and did not play. 
ending his the seventh longest consecutive games winning streak or playing streak in Warriors history, 254 games in a row. Since then, he averaged just 12 points, but tonight, 21 points, 11 rebounds, being the person that agitated Aiton inside. What was most impressive about Kavon's impact tonight, and where do you think he made the most impact? We talk about the comfortability of Draymond Green not being there for Steph Curry, the uncomfortability of it, right? And that's where Kavon Looney comes into play, is that he understands what Steph Curry wants so well, what he needs yeah. so well. And we talk about the slow start for Steph, right? But then you look at the fourth quarter, Steph Curry plus 11, Kevon Looney plus 11. Mm. Those are your old faithful that you had right there when you don't have Clay, you don't have Draymond. Well, you still have Steph Curry, you still have Kevon Looney. And that's a, a, where you just go, man, it's Kevon Looney, the <laughs> pro, a pro's yes. pro of all pro's pros, right? I mean, man, this is someone who just two nights ago was the only player to receive a DNP coach's decision by Steve Kerr who respects Kevon Looney mm. so, so much, but can go, hey, look, we're not having it right now. We're down three guys. We need an extra oomph right now. And he knows that whatever the Warriors need, Kevon Looney can provide. Right. Sure, it might not be a bunch of three-pointers by any means, <laughs> but as no, far no. as professionalism on the court, that's what you need out, out, out from a Kevon Looney, and that's what he, you know he's going to provide. And you know that actually goes in perfect alignment with what Pod said about Kevon. I had to write this down. Kevon Looney doesn't need to take a shot to impact the game. You know what to expect from him. He actually said that multiple times uh, in his post-game press conference, and that's very true. Kevon Looney was that person earlier on, he was looking a little old. I ain't gonna lie. There, the ball was getting stolen from him a little bit. He was struggling under the, the boards, but he toughened up, had some big steals, and was impactful in that pick and roll. So really stepped up to help out his brother, Stephen Curry. Now, another person that helped out, happened to be the second leading scorer, was Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga, though, did not have a crazily balanced game. In the last two games that he's come back since his injury, um, with not really an injury, but tendonitis in his knees, needing to rest, he's looked a little bit checked out. And tonight, although he had 19 points, he also had four turnovers. Although he had six rebounds, he also had four fouls. I mean, he was kind of all over the place. When you look at this performance from Jonathan Kaminga, are you at all concerned in his ability to come back and get back into the rotations? I think concern is, it's close to the right word, but not exactly the right word. Where I think we both agree that Jonathan Kaminga's game wasn't exactly what the box score shows. Sure. With the 19 points, I believe it was seven for 11 from the field, plus eight, plus minus. That all looks good. But there was times when disengagement, where, where you're going, okay, are you fully fully there? And yeah. maybe, maybe it is just physical ailments. Maybe it is game 80, coming back from a knee issue. We understand that. But this is a game where I really want to look, look at John, Jonathan Kaminga and go, you don't have Draymond there, mm -hmm. who is still the best defensive player on the Warriors. You don't have Klay Thompson, who is still showing he could be a number two offensively. Right. This is the game where you really need J.K. to fully engage, play a 21-win Blazers team, yep. and go, hey, I'm going to be the guy right now. I need to take over and help out a Steph Curry at that. So box score-wise, he did help out. Yeah. He did take over at times. He did show up that athleticism at times with some big-time dunks. But it's the little things with the early foul trouble, the early turnovers where you're going, okay, take a step yeah. back, maybe get him out of the game for a second. And Steve did do that. He had a pretty – early, um, you know, leash on Jonathan yep. Kaminga. Yeah. And I think that actually really helped him kind of get, get that reset for a second because the turnovers, the fouling early were concerning, and we saw him – progressively get better yep. as the game went on, though. I was just looking at the second half stats for Jonathan Kaminga. You know, no turnovers in the second huge, half, right? Huge, um, Being able to drop his eight points in there. And then also four from four from the free throw line. That man can hit his free throws. Shout out to Jonathan Kaminga because that is a huge factor of his game. Now, we do have some Steph podium sound. I do want to get to that. But this is going to be something to look at. I don't know if you guys noticed, Jonathan Kaminga hit his head pretty hard trying to foul um, or trying to block Scoot Henderson early in the game. He seemed fine. Everything was fine. But, of course, at this time of the year, you want to be cautious of everything. That was something that I definitely want to um, keep an eye on moving forward. All right, let's hear what Steph had to say at the podium. The whole roster we had at camp was amazing. Like, great kids that 
on both the, the boys and girls side that just were there willing to learn, willing to work hard, took the energy that I gave them um, and reciprocated it. Those two guys individually, obviously they're super talented, but talent can only take you so far. Like what's your mentality about how, how much better can you get? How, uh, how hard do you work? Are you coachable? Like stuff like that. And they showed that Dylan was, especially was, he was funny because I think he guarded me in a couple of uh, the pickup runs we had. Uh, I might not have scored on him. Uh, and I think he was mic'd up for some some uh, outlet, and I think he he knew he was he was counting my stats, uh, you know, a little matchup. But like you love that competitiveness because you know they they're there to get better. I think uh, I saw the video. He was telling another camper like, "This is how I would guard Steph. I do this, this, and that." Had a had a whole game plan. Um, you've run this camp for a few years. You've seen a lot of the guys that were probably in your camp. You've competed against them in the NBA. I imagine you see those guys at that camp last summer and you think these guys in a couple of years are going to be in the league playing alongside me. Is that, do you see that with those two guys? No, for sure. They're obviously the top uh, talent in the country for a reason. And like I, I tell them when they come to camp, we just want to be a small part of your story as you keep climbing the ladder because you know, hopefully they took something you know tangible away from their experience and you know, b b boost their confidence even more. But they're all amazing talents and it's cool to see the uh, alumni from camp that have been in the league. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. was the very first camp I had, all the way to uh, to this this last year. We'll see see what happens. Hey, Seth, can you just talk a little bit about how you're able to kind of flip that switch late in a game like you did tonight, where you don't have your best shooting night, but when the game was on the line, be able to put the ball in the basket, make the right play. Your teammates all said the same thing. We just know that stuff's going to come through. There's a lot of positive self-talk as you're going through some of the struggles. Uh, there's a lot of uh, internal communication going on, just trying to stay locked in that I knew uh, I might have more opportunities to get a couple shots up. They'd be big shots to keep the momentum going. i never try to lose confidence at all. Uh, you play a little mind games yourself. I changed my shoes twice at night just to see if I could spark a little the juice, but that's more just fun, just trying to uh, experiment. But the rest of it is just got to stay positive through your struggles because things can turn around really quickly. If you get down on yourself, you miss, you miss the moment even more. Steph, you didn't need to change your shoes. We had Dalton back in the building. That gave you the extra juice. And that man right there, Trace Jackson Davis, gave the Warriors defense a little bit of extra juice. We'll talk about that when we come back on Dubs Talk Live. Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit Mancini Sleep World during our We'll Pay the Sales Tax event. Save big on premium mattresses plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. YouTube, what's up? Any new parents out in our YouTube family? Any advice you guys <laughs> want to offer our Tweet friend me. Dalton? Tweet me. <laughs> Tweet at him. Drop it in the chat. What up? All right. Dubs winning without Draymond was amazing. Yeah. It is very Look, difficult. Uh, it, Bree Banks says that. It is a win. Very difficult to win without Draymond, especially to make the Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga tandem work. Yeah. What do you yeah. think about the way they played tonight? Well, especially early on with like I thought with JK, Wiggins was kind of in that same boat where he was scoring some points, but kind of, you know, fumbling balls and having turnovers. Yeah. And not and missing an easy layup, a little bunny left-handed one. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think it might have been Steph that hit him, where you're going, okay, I, I like that he's he's beating beating the zone with his mid-range. Little things like that. I think he was part of the block party as well. But just, again, one of those good, mm. not great Andrew Wiggins games. I, I feel like if I was on a grading scale, him and J.K. were probably both like a B-minus-ish maybe. Yeah. And, and maybe yeah. I'm being harsher because it's the Blazers. Fair. But I'm like, yeah, if you don't have Clay, you don't have Draymond, those two guys especially – got to be key, key, key contributors. And they were, yeah. but with their faults in between. But I think that you made the point, it's the Blazers. Right. It's the 21-win Trailblazers. And that 
is integral. Yeah. Being able to not play to the level of competition. Exactly. Right? Yes. That's huge. Yes. Especially as you're trying to gain some momentum yeah. going into the playoffs. And you don't want to see that with a 21-year-old like Jonathan Kaminga. You want to go, hey, this is your opportunity. Go, go, go. Right. Right. And also with a veteran like Andrew Wiggins, understanding the moment a little bit better early on, I would say. Okay. All right, YouTube. We're continuing the Welcome back to Dubs Talk Live, presented by Mancini Sleep World, Dalton, Zena, and we're here talking about the Warriors' win over the Trailblazers, 192. Now, that ninth two seems pretty impressive. The Warriors have been able to keep opponents on the road to a, under 100 points. Phenomenal. Big-time defense, and they're having block parties all <laughs> around the country. 13 blocks for the Warriors tonight. Three times their average of 4.5 per game. Incredibly impressive defensive game tonight. But what would you say about the way they showed up against the Trailblazers? Oh, man, the block party, you are not kidding about that. The sun was starting to shine today in the Bay Area. <laughs> and even in the Pacific Northwest, where the rain could be coming, the Warriors were bringing that block yeah. party energy all the way to Portland, right? I mean, you brought up the 4.5 blocks per game that they average. These last two games, though, they have 25 total blocks. Unreal. I mean, they Unreal. had 12 in L.A. They followed that up with two nights later with 13 <sighs> on the Blazers. And this was a communal block party. Correct. Right? Correct. You saw both Kavon Looney and Trace Jackson Davis swat away four shots apiece. TJD now this season, look, he, he has been an enforcer on defense. Look at this. Woo. Swatting it away. The rookie has no problem anymore. Get out of here. Look, Trace Jackson Davis now has four games this season with four blocks. That's the most for the Warriors since Kevin Durant had eight such games in 2017-18. So we know that this is a mature rookie, and he's showing in this growth. The Warriors just have not had a presence like this mm. in the middle, especially this young, in a long, right. long time. So like I said, communal block party, five players had at least one block. Four of those multiple blocks by a Warrior tonight. Big, big time for a game where the offense wasn't always there. Yeah. Where they go from two nights ago making threes at a historic pace to tonight, not really right. be able to hit it tonight. So the 34%. blocks. They played, they played some big dividends tonight. Now, I remember when I was playing, I was the block queen. I was Ooh, a volleyball the block player. block queen. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I averaged nine blocks a game in high school. Nine? Because I was a volleyball player. You couldn't get to ten? I know. I wasn't doing <laughs> enough, y'all. I wasn't doing enough. But I remember my guards letting people go by because they knew I was back there. How does having someone like a Trace Jackson Davis be a key block, like, king back there, how does that impact the Warriors' ability to help on all? out on the perimeter. Oh, it's huge, right? Yeah. I mean, think about your, your mental what you just brought up as far as knowing, I can let this person go past me because yeah. I have a Xena, I have a Trace Jackson Davis, a Kevon Looney tonight, who can be the enforcer that we need right now, especially, I would say, at this point in the season mm, with so much yeah. on the line, but also just bodies being worn down. I brought up the exhaustion. They at least had looked exhausted. I know it's the first night of a back-to-back, -back, but you can see the wear and tear a little bit on them. So, yeah, when you have that behind you, man, I can only imagine being a guard, being someone like a Chris Paul yeah. who's, who's later in his career, a smaller guard who had a handful of all defensive uh, nods on his back back in the day. But mm -hmm. now a little bit older and can go, hey, he got past me, but I can move on to the next one because I got Trace right here. Right. I got Kavon right here. So that goes a long, long way with the mental and the physicality of the Warriors tonight. But I would love to see it early on. Trace sure. Jackson Davis, assert your physicality. Assert your dominance early on. I love it. Make, make the other team know your presence. Don't wait for the third to fourth quarter, not even the second quarter. Right. That first quarter, if you can go, I'm a rookie, but I'm here. Yeah. Now you're really showing everybody else what's going on. He only had one in the, in the first quarter that made me go, oh, okay, <laughs> against Ke uh, Chris Murray. I was going to say Keegan Murray. But I like the way you said, I got Kavon right here. I got so-and-so right here because that's what the Warriors needed. They needed a team effort in order to get this win, especially with Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Gary Payton II out tonight. These three are integral to what the Warriors do defensively and, of course, offensively, too. How much of an impact did you see their absence on the Warriors tonight? I think it was really felt early on because we talk about 
not only, of course, their play, mm. but what Draymond does talking, what he does just as your enforcer, your intimidator, yep. just being on the floor. So when he's just not on the floor, as we've seen for a handful of reasons this year, you know what it does to the competition as far as not so much them not trying hard, letting off the brakes, but no, no, the opposite. Draymond's not here. Let's go. Let's push, push, push. That's what the opposition is really thinking when you don't have a Draymond right. Green. And then when you don't have Clay Thompson's 27 points that he provided two nights prior, GP2, what he does as the energizer bunny yeah, for the Warriors. Yeah. So I think that really if you're a, a young, young, young Blazers team, you try to right away – hit it out of the gates without those three guys. So I think you could really feel the impact early, and you needed a, another Steph Curry clutch fourth quarter, a Kevon Looney been there, right. done that type of player at the end of the game to really will them to this victory. Yeah, and the thing is, you make a great point. When people are out on teams, it's usually the mindset of the opposing team that is impacted more in terms of how they can attack you. All right, they got the win, guys. That, that's what's important. They got the win, and it does impact where they are in the standings. When we get back on Dove Talk Live, we're going to talk about exactly where do the Warriors land now that they've gotten this win, and they're on their way back to play against the Pelicans, who, by the way, got a win against the Kings tonight. Don't go anywhere. It's Dove Talk Live, presented by Mancini Sleep World. All right, Melvin Carino, this win proves that the Warriors has a depth lineup. Tonight was Big Loon's mm. night. And I think that I struggle with that okay. as far as depth goes. Right. Only because it was so ugly in the first half. <laughs> and Ooh, what I was. mean by ugly, it just felt like they didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. Festus and I were in the green room looking at the way that they were moving on the court. Just conjoining, we, right? Like just, say it. Yeah. That's right. And that's what we, we were joking. We were like acting as if we were there, we were like, oh, are you going to cut? Oh, oh, I'm not sure. I usually cut, but you, are you going to cut? And that's what it felt Moses like. Moses Moody that, passed the ball off of Kevon Looney. He wasn't even looking. He wasn't even looking. So you it know, just I mean, felt just, as if, yes, there's depth in terms of talent. Yeah. But is there depth in terms of cohesiveness? Mm. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to think that there is, especially at this point of the season. This yeah. is the very end. Right. But right. these are also players who are, aren't always playing together. Right. Right? At, yeah. at this point... Steve Kerr really has a nine-man rotation. You know, He's and, trying and to lock it in, and three of them are out tonight. He, right, and, and that's where I'm going back to, okay, well, when's the last time player X played with player Y and player Z? Dario Sarge got a few minutes for the first time right. since March 20th, right? right? So a lot of players had to kind of step in where you're not getting practice time at this point in the season. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys are stuck to the bench at this point in the season out of, out of the rotations. Mm. And also, and you lose those three guys, and you're going – Oh, yeah, wait, where do you like to be again? Yeah. When do you like to cut? Okay, when do I need help? Right. So, as you said, I would say, yeah, the cohesiveness didn't really match the talent depth tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're going to have to work on that. But hopefully, Clay, Dre, GP2, hurry it on back. <laughs> as in Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. Welcome back to Dubs Talk Live, presented by Mancini Sleep World. The Warriors win tonight. What does that mean for where they end up in the Western Conference, the wild Western Conference? Well, it got a little bit more wild tonight. They are now tied up with Sacramento in the loss column, tied up at ninth place, technically. <laughs> but Sacramento has a better win record in their conference, and their, their pod, their division, excuse yeah. me. And so as, that, as a result of that, they technically have the up on the Warriors. So they're now in ninth place. Boom. But yes, you see, 45-35, 45-35, 45-35 for all the Lakers, Zach, and the Warriors. So where does that leave them with these last two games? What's the scenario? Still trying to get into that at least eight seed, right? Because okay. Steph said after the game in L.A. that, look, wherever we are, we're going to compete. Mm. But to have two cracks out instead of one, that does make a big difference. Yeah. So I understand some people might be going, okay, well, they've been better on the road than home. So why not just be the 10 seed? Number one, you still want to be at home, right. especially in a playoff environment. But man, if you can get two cracks in the play in and kind of give yourself a little bit of that wiggle room, that's got to feel better as far as the, the mentality going into all of this. So yeah, 
I can't break down all the craziness of the math yeah, right now. I know, I know. But look, the point is win, win, see where you're at. That's, That's what the right. Warriors are really they, – they said from the very start that their goal this final week – Let's just keep winning. Just keep winning. Ride that wave. Ride that momentum. They, they now have, what, as many wins as they did last year. Yeah. They can't get to that same seating as last year, but they feel like a better team than they did last year. And I think they just want, want to really get good, proper habits yeah. going into the play and going into the play playoffs and then see where you're at from there. And Dalton, you sound like a coach. Get good habits. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's what the Warriors need to be able to close out this season in a good position. So now let's look at this calendar real quick as to what is left for the Warriors and then what's ahead. Of course, tonight was Portland. They've got New Orleans. Tomorrow, New Orleans just took down the Sacramento Kings. However, Zion Williamson came out of that game did not return. Up in the air, what his availability is going to be for tomorrow. And then, of course, they're going to take on the Utah Jazz, who they just beat a week ago from the game that they're going to play, 118 to 110. But that was without their big stars. So, Warriors have their work cut out for them, but it's just win, baby. That's the energy that they're on, that's the energy that they're with. What are your predictions? My predictions are win and win. Okay. I, I, I like to <laughs> like just win right there, right? Look, shout out to Oakland. They've lost way too much. They've lost way too many teams. But if they can bring back that Al Davis just win baby mentality right just now. Just win baby. Bring that from Oakland to San Francisco from back in the day to Chase Center. Get that Oof, energy. There you go. Chase Center needs to be rocking tomorrow. Rocking Sunday. I'm, I'm telling you, Dub Nation. You hear Come it? out in full effect for the Warriors tomorrow night against the Pelicans. It hey. should be a party in San Francisco. Dalton Johnson just told you. I'm Zena Kata endorsing it. Chase Center, you better show up for the Warriors. It's been Dubs Talk Live presented by Mancini Sleep World. Good night. Oh, okay. So they're saying Zion returned. The last time I saw, he did not return. I okay. I okay. Mean, number one, Apologies. good because Thank you. I want to see Zion play. I want to see Zion play. I'm tired of this. I've been hurt. messing with this since yeah. he was at Duke. I right. don't like this in and out. Yeah. Play, Zion. We want you to play. He's been looking good. Chris Mullen was telling me that he lost 35 pounds. He's been looking great. He's been looking bouncy. Looking springy, we want to see some competition at Chase. Thank you guys for correcting me on that. Apologies. Um, all righty. Let, Eric Gomez, let's do it in all caps. I love this energy. Everyone's feeling good. Let's go. The Warriors need to treat home games like an away game, Captain Gibson. It's very true because Shoot. something about them being on the road. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> something about them being on the road lately. Um, it's, been, it's been unreal. All right. Well, Dalton. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank well, you. you didn't miss a beat. I, You've been with us. Whew. You've been keeping up with the Warriors. I, I, it's been fun. I mean, it's been keeping up as good as I could. Yeah, it was well. really, really cool to see the different things that you've done, to see the women's empowerment show that you mm, guys yeah. did, to see, the, to see the, the way that you and Kareth have worked together, you and Moni, everybody, right? So it's always been a team effort here, but really been cool to see from afar whenever I can too, just to tune in. Yep. And like I said, that women's empowerment show was really cool to see from my perspective as yeah. well, as an outsider who knows you guys so well. And who also now has a baby girl. Yes, so it, yeah. was, it was really fun. So again, cool. yes, it was really cool to follow along best I can. I feel like Steph got to lock in as much as I can. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I mean, that is really my mentality right now as a dad is just lock in. All right, well, before we go, if there was one thing that the Warriors need to lock in on in these last two games, what would you say? I still say defense. I, okay. I, I still say defense. We, we, we saw the number tonight get to 92 points. Okay. We know that they can score in bunches. I still trust Steph. I still trust that Clay's going to continue to do what he's been doing recently. Okay. But if they can lock in that defense, get that Draymond Green mentality, bring the block party to Chase Center now, yeah. yep. I think that's huge. Because this Warriors team, when they won the championships, always been able to put up points. But the defense has always been a catalyst mm. more than anything else. As much as we want to talk about the three-point shooting, the defense, the firepower, I mean the offense, the firepower, mm -hmm. it's the defense that really, I believe, has been key to those four rings. I'm trying to see if Festus is around the corner. Right, right. Hey, don't tell Molly, but All Festus, the, I got you. Festus, <laughs> you got a supporter here. Yeah. I would say I agree with you. Um, I would say turnovers. <laughs> yes. They got to get those under control. That, it's, and some of them are just unexcusable. Um, it 
Tonight, it was very interesting to see three point guards out there with Paul, Curry, and Pajemski, who, by the way, had zero turnovers. Shout out to him. But cannot have this many turnovers, some of these so, like, careless live ball turnovers. Um, I think it's just taking opportunities away from them, and it sucks o oxygen out mm -hmm. of them. And they need every single bit of oxygen because they're a little bit older. You know, <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit. So I, I think that, you know, as much as they can run the ball, keep the ball pace, the pace going, and not be a victim of their own circumstance, mm. that's, I think that's going to be my thing. Lock in on those turnovers and the defense. All right, folks, we're going to lock in on good night, okay? Have a wonderful evening. Dub Talk Live will be back tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>